1957, Jack Taylor had a simple idea. Out of a cramped basement of a St. Louis car dealership, he turned that idea into the world's largest car rental company. What was the idea? Take care of your customers and your employees first, and growth and profits will follow. In this chapter, we're going to focus on taking care of employees. You see, Jack Taylor knew how important employee satisfaction was to his business's success. So let's find out how Enterprise, even today, continues to win so many Best Employer Awards. Get ready, because it's time to get motivated. Jack started the company with seven cars as an individual entrepreneur in St. Louis, Missouri, and today we are in five countries with 65,000 employees, 7,000 locations, and almost a million cars. Management's belief is take care of your employees, take care of your customers. Uh, from there, the, the, the profits will follow. We don't treat every employee the same. Uh, we realize that individuals are motivated by different things, and we kind of use that to our advantage. Uh, we have over 7,000 branches and we work in teams of anywhere from three to seven individuals and that allows the branch manager to really zero in on what makes that person tick. We have a promote from within philosophy so everyone starts out uh, in the management training program learning to run the business, works their way up based on what they do and on their performance and really the sky's the limit. You can go a million different directions, take your career and change it without ever changing companies. How important is motivation in the workplace? Well, it goes without saying that happy workers lead to happy customers, which in turn leads to successful businesses. For over a hundred years, many people have studied the subject of motivation and have come up with some pretty amazing conclusions about what motivates employees and how it relates to a business's success. We've been fortunate uh, in the last 10 years or so to really be recognized for our management training program and for the development that we place on our, that we take care of our employees with. And some of those things include Business Week's Best Places to Launch a Career, CollegeGrad.com and Black Collegian Magazine have both named us numerous years as uh, one of the top recruiters of college grads in the country. We were named to Princeton Reviews, uh, best entry level jobs. So a lot of that speaks to uh, both who we are as an organization and all of the emphasis we put on really training and developing people for the future. In 1911, Frederick Taylor became known as the father of scientific management upon the publishing of his book, The Principles of Scientific Management. To improve productivity, Taylor studied the most efficient ways to do things that workers do in their jobs, and through time motion studies, he found that through better techniques and correctly designed tools, workers could be more efficient. Take a look at the workings of a fast food restaurant or companies like UPS, and you'll quickly see Taylor's theories in place even today. Our management training program is unique in that it is really the entry place into the company. Everyone that you'll meet pretty much came through that program. Um, it is our way to really bring someone in and teach them the skills that it takes to be successful in the business, in any business, but specifically in our business. So it's a structured eight to 12 month training program where each employee will come through and they'll really be involved in every aspect of what it takes to run that business. When people are getting promoted from within, it drives certain behaviors in terms of making sure that you're taking care your employees, taking care of your customers, and from there, within two to three years, many of our management trainees are running their own branches to where they're responsible for the profit and the loss of that branch, the customer service of that branch, the different pieces that um, can, can make it very successful. Another early researcher was Elton Mayo. In 1927, he discovered something rather peculiar when he and colleagues came to the Hawthorne Electric Plant to find out if certain factors such as workplace lighting, temperature, or humidity had an impact on workers' productivity. The strange thing was that no matter what conditions the test group of employees work under, hot, cold, light, dark, humid, or dry, in every case, their productivity increased by 50% over the workers not being tested. What he discovered was what we refer today as the Hawthorne Effect. 
when workers were given the opportunity to be part of something they felt was important, were involved in the planning of the experiments, and felt their ideas were respected and meaningful, their productivity increased no matter what their work conditions were. Our employees come to us with great ideas and with uh, you know, so much to, to give, and uh, we know that the only way we're going to take advantage of that is to listen to them and their ideas and a lot of the things that we do as a company today came from great ideas of our employees by listening to them. Uh, for instance, the we'll pick you up, which we're known for is picking up our customers, came from an employee's idea that it would be a, a, you know, an easier way to run the business to uh, send someone over to pick up a customer and bring them back to the office since their own car wasn't available to them. That was one employee's idea that grew and became something that we became known as a brand for. What motivates an employee at work really has to do with what motivates people in general. Psychologist Abraham Maslow recognized this and came up with his now famous Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. In Maslow's Hierarchy, the lowest level of needs must first be met. Only once those are met, a higher level of need emerges and motivates the person to do something to satisfy it. We tend to motivate employees and to get them excited about what they're doing because we really make that a part of the business. There's that entrepreneurial spirit that goes along with, um, you know, you're going to come on and take ownership of this role and take ownership of what you do. In the 1960s, another psychologist, Frederick Herzberg, asked workers in a study to rank various job-related factors in order of importance. The results showed these as the most important motivating factors. Herzberg found that the factors getting the most votes all related to job content, and factors related to the job environment had little to do with motivating employees. He thus concluded that there were two groups of factors, motivators, those that cause employees to be productive and have satisfaction, and hygiene factors, those that can cause dissatisfaction if missing, but don't necessarily motivate employees. We know that recognition is one of the key things that, that really motivates people here, and so a lot is built around that. There's nothing like coming to work and doing what you think is a good job and having someone pat you on the back and saying, great job today. Really appreciate what, what, you, what you've been able to accomplish. If you compare Maslow's and Herzberg's theories, you'll find that there is a great deal of similarity between the two. In fact, both of their theories went into the development of job enrichment theory, which is a strategy centered around motivating employees through the job itself. We're always looking to do our job a little bit better, and so at the branch level, all of our employees are empowered to do what it takes to take care of the customer. Empowering employees at Enterprise Rental Car is one of the keys to the culture. Um, day one, individuals are giving, given direction and allowed the ability and autonomy to make decisions. We'll get groups that will come together at the branch level or at the area level, come up with different solutions to where we can figure out what the best plan is and each of our individual employees and each of our individual branches actually have the autonomy to come up with what those best solutions may be. So far, we've been focusing on employees, but what about managers? Douglas McGregor observed that managers typically fall into one of two categories. Theory X managers typically think people dislike work, must be controlled, want direction, and are motivated by fear and money. Theory Y managers, on the other hand, believe people like work, naturally work towards goals they believe in, accept and sometimes seek responsibility, are highly imaginative and creative, and are motivated by a variety of rewards. Which type of manager would you prefer to work for? I think it's very important that the management responds to what the employees tell them. So we work in teams of anywhere from three to seven individuals in a branch setting. And the branch manager, that allows the branch manager opportunity to really work one-on-one -on -one with each individual and help that individual reach the goals that they set. We're constantly looking at um, how you're helping someone else to be successful. So uh, we look to our management especially, that, that to, in order to be promoted as a manager, you have to show me who you've gotten promoted, um, who you've helped to be successful. And we do that with a lot of informal coaching and mentoring with a formal mentoring program, as well as um, sitting down together, weekly one-on-one -on -one training and development, goal setting. So it's a big part of our culture. The trend these days is definitely towards Theory Y management. 
Additionally, researchers like William Ochi study successful American and Japanese companies and determined that a hybrid management style, which he called Theory Z, provides the best balance between the organization's needs and the needs of employees. The harder you strive, the harder the individual strives next to you, and everybody's willing to help you reach your own goals. Realistic goals are, are mandatory. I mean, you have to have something that is uh, going to be a stretch for you, but at the same time, get buy-in from everybody on the team that you're going to be able to achieve those goals. Over the decades, different generations have entered the workplace, each with their own unique generational differences. Companies have realized that what motivates baby boomers is different than what motivates Gen Xers or Gen Yers. Today's new hires are tomorrow's managers and corporate leaders. Each future generation brings a different set of skills and traits to an ever-changing workplace. But one thing will most likely remain the same. Motivation will come from the job itself. It's up to managers to develop a workplace that's as rewarding for employees as possible. And sometimes, it's as simple as saying, thanks, I really appreciate what you're doing. I think an employee in, in our world is motivated most by the feeling of, of accomplishment, of taking care of someone, of making a difference, whether that be in a customer or in another employee's situation. Um, they're motivated by the, um, the ability to grow, to learn new things, uh, to be more successful. Um, not necessarily because of the money that goes with it or the title, but really that I'm learning, um, I'm learning new uh, skills, I'm growing my portfolio or my own resume within the organization, um, and I'm doing it in a, in a place where I love going to work every day. I have great people that I work with, and um, that teamwork is a really big part of it.